Hey, uh, what a great crowd. What a great Tiger Walk. I want to thank our fans. A tremendous atmosphere. Uh, they did everything that we asked them to do. was very proud of the, our fans of the Tiger Walk and the whole atmosphere uh, going into the game. After the review of the film, an extensive review, all day yesterday, number one, Coach Better. I'll start with me. Coach Better put our guys in better uh, position. Schemes could have been better. I know our guys... Uh, did a good job for the most part, but there are some things that we could have done better for our team. That was number one. Number two is execute better. Uh, there was some execution that wasn't done, uh, and uh, it cost us. You can't do it against a good team like Alabama. Uh, number three on the offensive defensive line, we have to be better in terms of building more depth, increasing the number of quality players that we already have. Uh, that was evident uh, during the game. We have 24-hour rule. Press on to Arkansas. Now on to Arkansas. Um, we look forward to this trip. Look forward to going up to, to Fayetteville, Arkansas, to play Coach Morris and his team on offense. They're very good on offense. Uh, they're averaging 26 points a game. They're spread. They have a very good scheme. Uh, Ty Story is an excellent quarterback. Rakeem Boyne, a junior college uh, transfer, the leading rusher. He is explosive, and he makes a lot of plays. He is a very, very good back. On defense, uh, they're giving up 33 points a game. Armand Watts is a very good football player. He has seven sacks. Deshaun Scooter Harris from right here at John Aaron High School leads the team in tackles, 67 tackles, a very good middle linebacker. And on special teams, they're very solid. Now, we look forward to Tell the Truth Monday today. 24-hour rule and press it on to Arkansas. I totally expect our team to bounce back and have an excellent week. Any questions? Coach, did you get an explanation on the targeting call with Grant? And then the second part, yeah. uh, with that and Devin, obviously, do you plan to change maybe how you teach it or coach it during the week or make guys more aware of it? Yeah, well, we, we talked to the team about it, uh, of uh, not leading with our helmet, obviously. We... We teach the technique near shoulder, near foot, near shoulder. Uh, they told me that he hit him with his shoulder pad, so they under over over overturned the call on the field, and that was the explanation. You know, you, you mentioned you know, Coach Better was the first thing that came out. Does anything kind of jump out or come to mind about with that? You know, I, I think he was ready to go. Uh, there were some new things thrown at us. Uh, uh, open date, that's going to happen. I, th I thought we made some adjustments uh, for the most part. Some of them, it took us a little while longer to make the adjustments. Uh, just things like that. Ed, over here. Do you have any update on John Battle, and do you think there's a chance he could practice or play this week? Yeah, John's questionable. I'd say he's 50-50. Coach, I think uh, – what a lot of people were disappointed about is that, you know, Alabama, Arkansas scored 31 points, Tennessee scored 21, Texas yeah. A&M scored 23. Um, I mean, those games weren't as competitive as your game, but yeah. with a with a week to – extra week to prepare and everything, yeah. were you just disappointed that the, yeah. the way the offense – Yeah, very. Well, we all disappointed, no question. Uh, and, again, we could have coached better. We could have executed better. A uh, lot of scrimmers struggled at times. No, we got to get them more help. Well, maybe just a quick follow-up, Coach. You've, you've played him three times now, and touchdowns have been really hard to come by. I mean, yeah. now do you have really a volume of work to look at? Is it scheme? Is it players? Or what do you think? I think it's a combination of both. You know, we have scheme, uh, protection again. You know, we broke down on protection. Uh, again, sometimes we had max protection. They beat double teams. So uh, we got to get better at that. Uh, we got to learn how to run the football against them. Obviously, only 12 yards. Uh, rushing, uh, that's not going to win any football game, and that, that's not our strength. Ed, you, you've been very, you were very good in scoring touchdowns in the red zone early in the season, the first four or five games. Yeah. The last four or five kind of dropped off scoring touchdowns. Yeah. Have you seen anything that, that's kind of – Yeah, the guys are changing their coverage on us. Uh, they know what we're doing. We have to be – like I said, we have to be more creative – we have to run the football. We have to do a couple of different things. We had some plans uh, to be a little bit more creative in the red zone, but they changed their coverage. And some of the routes that we were going to run, we couldn't run against their, their coverage. Ed, over here again. 
you've and I think you guys are seven and zero under you after you've lost a game. How do you keep one loss from spiraling and kind of getting the team to focus on the next week? You know, again, uh, you know, today is an important day. I have, I have to be my best today, and uh, we had a meeting with the staff today. Uh, we got to let it go. Uh, there's a lot of hurt people in that building. There's a lot of hurt people on our football team. I understand that. This is a very big game for everybody involved in the state of Louisiana, but we have to let it go. We have the 24-hour rule, and we need to press on to Arkansas, and I do believe we're going to do that. And the competition in the last four games has, has all been ranked, but uh, you have zero passing touchdowns and four interceptions. Is, is there a disconnect, you think, with the quarterbacks and receivers? Is it, is it the play calling? What part of that needs to be better specifically? You know, we need to look at that. We need to look at what, what's going on. Obviously, we are. We looked at it extensively yesterday. It has a lot to do with the defenses that we're playing. But, again, it all starts with protection first. It all starts with catching the football. And those are the things that we're looking at right now. Ed, down here, you hinted this about how it's important for you today. I mean, what's going to be your message to the team? Because, obviously, you know, they heard about – you know, you heard what they, you said after the game. So what's going to be your message, yeah. how you're going to address the players so they're mentally they're still yeah. ready to go? Well – First thing I tell my team is to block out the noise. And um, we address the things that we need to address within the meeting. And uh, I have a very close relationship with all of my players. And uh, there are some things that we're going to address today, and I think we're going to be fine. Hey, Coach, I'm here. Um, you know, you, how did Steve uh, react to the game against Alabama two times against Alabama and just – you know, not not getting any points. In both he was games. disappointed. Obviously, very disappointed. And uh, you know, there's nobody who wants to do it better than Steve, and uh, wants to try. But he was very disappointed. Obviously, and coach in the middle. Um, with only three games left in the regular season, have y'all given any thought about giving Miles Brennan some reps? You know, Miles Brennan is ready to go every game. Um, the time that we could give him some reps, uh, I asked him, and uh, there were, he was he was just nursing a slight injury. Then all of the other games have been so tight that uh, that uh, we just kept Joe in there. Uh, there's three games to go. There are several players that can get more reps and still get redshirted. But I do want to put him in at the right time. I don't want to put him at the wrong time. And I want to make sure that he's ready to go in. But, again, if Joe would get hurt, he's going in. He's our quarterback, and I believe in him. Ed, you, you guys kind of shuffled right tackles during the game. You, you took Garrett out at some point. Were those all just performance-based or any of those guys hurt? Yeah. Yeah, one's strong against the run, one's strong against the pass. And, uh, obviously, uh, both of them were struggling at times. So, we're going to keep that competition open this week and see who plays better and uh, see what uh, – you know, we we just digging into Arkansas. We got to see what we we have to protect. Uh, see their their defensive line, which which is really good. They have some good pass rushers. So we have to see which one fit, suits us best. You made right tackle yeah, is that what you said? Yeah, I was talking about that and left guard. Well, I, I was talking about right tackle one one th one thing at a time. All right, then left guard. Uh, yeah, you know, obviously Garrett's our starter, and uh, but we do believe in Sadiq, and uh, we're gonna give. You know, Garrett just came back. There was some rustiness, and uh, obviously, but he's a really good player. He's a good leader for us, and I think that the more he plays, the better you know he's going to become. Coach, he talks about blocking out the noise and everything. This week is probably going to be the exact opposite of last week in terms of hype and excitement, and uh, yeah. maybe pretty cold up there as well. Things, yeah, things like that. I mean, uh, you went up there in two, 2016 and really dominated. I mean, yeah. Those kind of yeah, we're going to prepare this team. You know, we go to play in any elements. Uh, we went to play in the elements in, uh, in Auburn, Alabama. It's a different element, obviously. But uh, we got to be mentally tough. This team's got to be mentally tough. we got a lot to play for, man. This is a big game for us in terms of where we want to go, in terms of how strong we can finish, in terms of if we do finish strong, where we can end up, the things that we can do. Uh, so there's a lot of great things this football. We're 7-2 and two now. And we have a chance to have an excellent season. And uh, that's what we're going to look at. And we're going to use that as a motivational tool. Coach, do you see the transition with Coach Morris trying to move 
maybe what Coach Bielema had recruited in his big power run yeah. guys to, yeah. to a tempo game. Yeah. And expecting a lot of yeah, we talk, we're talking about that today. We was talking about, I think it was two years ago, where they had the largest offensive line, including the NFL. And you can see where there's quicker guys. There's a lot of returning starter, but you see where they're putting in more athletic quicker guys, and you can see there's a transition starting to take place. You know, I've known Coach Morris for a while, recruited his quarterback, uh, Jevin Sneed, at Stevensville High School. I actually interviewed him for a job at another school I was at, so I have a lot of respect for him, and I know what he can do. I know what he did at Clemson. He's an excellent game day caller. You know, he put 31 points, I believe, when Alabama had an excellent game plan, so we, we do respect his offense. Follow-up, do you expect the tempo? Is it more misdirection, or is it – how do they want to attack Quarterback game? runs. Uh, quarterback runs. Uh, power run game. Counters. Uh, different personnel groupings. Uh, misdirection, like you would call it. Uh, Up-tempo, obviously. Shots down the field. A lot of screens and play-action pass. You guys okay? You're kind of quiet today. Coach, when it comes to Alabama, you guys and never want to say just concede that they are, you know, the best. But is it to a point where they, they are playing on a different level than everybody else, or uh, you know? Well, let me say this to you: uh, they have great players. So do we. Uh, Coach Saban's been there for twelve years and has done a tremendous job with his program. I believe Tua is probably the best or if not one of the best players in the country, he made some tremendous plays. Although I thought our DBs did very well. I think overall their program is very solid and uh, they know how to win. And uh, they played better than we did Saturday night. That's the bottom line. Hey, Ed, down here. Um, what, what kind of specific things do they throw different at you that y'all didn't expect? Say it again? What, what, you, when you said they threw things different at you, Alabama, yeah. what, what were kind you of know, specific? There were some, some different runs that we haven't seen. Uh, there were some different coverages. Uh, let's see, they they played some coverages more than they played against other teams. They played against us. So. Joe's obviously been in a lot of tough situations, just with pressure in his pocket and whatnot. I guess how would you grade how he's handled that pressure in the pocket all season? He's been good, but you know, he, at at the end, Steve was kind of mad at him because he's looking at the rush a little too much. Uh, you know, and uh, at one time he said. Uh, <laughs> He said he needs to be a little bit more patient. I said, it's a little tough down there to be patient. And, uh, you know, he, he was under the rest of most of the night, and he needs to learn how to hang in there. But I think for the most of the part, he was. Most of the night, he was. Coach, a couple of local kids that really seemed to hustle, Todd Harris and Patrick Queen the other night, yeah. just the job they did uh, yeah. stepping in. I thought Todd, Todd played his, his best game, and I thought Patrick made a lot of good plays in the first half. I thought he did a tremendous job stepping in for Devin, just like I thought he would. And we're proud of both those boys. Uh, helped recruit both of them, great parents, great homes, and uh, we're proud that they stayed in Louisiana. Coach in the back left here. I know rankings aren't everything, but a lot of the polls still have you all in the top ten. I mean, what's the energy of the locker room, knowing that there's still a lot of hope? You yeah, haven't seen the guys today. And uh, I think that today we have to bring them up a little bit. Uh, that's the feeling I'm getting. But, you know, these guys will bounce back. Uh, we're going to talk to them. Uh, we're going to talk about the things that we have to play for. Uh, we're going to take it one game at a time. But if we, if we do the things that we need to do, we can have an outstanding season. And I think as the week goes on, they're going to bounce back. Uh, I want to have a 24-hour rule today, and hopefully it only takes 24 hours. This one may take a little bit more. Coach, we've seen the, the Louisiana kids come back, you know, and, and play well against you. You're going to face another one this week in Arkansas. Is it just that the state has that much talent? Yeah. Some of these guys are going to go other places. Mm -hmm. I think the kid at Arkansas was a three-star guy. He wasn't all yeah. here. So yeah. eventually they do come around and make plays. Yeah, they do, and I'm glad for them. I mean, the, especially the guys that we, you know, if we don't offer a guy, uh, I'll help him go anywhere else he wants to go. And I, I, I have friends all over the country. If they call me and they ask me what I think about them, I'm going to say, hey, he may, he may be great for you, but we may be stocked up in that position. He don't fit exactly what we want to. And, and I'm glad to see the guys go somewhere to get, that we don't offer and they, they make a name for themselves and do well. God bless them. Hey, 
Ed, what, what are your memories from Arkansas? Your assistant strength coach there? Yeah. I made $25 every two weeks. <laughs> A lot of cash. First time I saw white gravy. Yep. Yep. It was. And um, I lived in the dormitory. I was an assistant strength coach the first uh, year. And then I was a graduate assistant uh, coach on the football field. I was um, under Coach Hatfield, great coach. He's still a personal friend of mine. Uh, in fact, I text with him two or three times. I loved it up there. I absolutely enjoyed my time up there for two years, learned a lot of football. Uh, that job got me to the University of Miami and on and on and on, and I used those connections the rest of my life. So I loved it up there. I thought it was a great school. Is white gravy any good? Yeah, I liked it. It was good. Did you meet Kelly up there? What was that? Did you meet Kelly up there? No, uh, no. But, uh, Kelly was, uh, that was 1986, and I met Kelly in 1995, so that was a while back. Coach in the middle, you talked about um, how important it was to bounce back. LSU hasn't um, lost back-to-back -back games since 2015. So what is the importance of winning this game and just progressing throughout the remainder of the season? So it's a lot about our character. So a lot about who we are. Like I said, I thought today was my biggest day of coaching since I've been in LSU. And I told that to our staff. And that we, we need to bring him up. Uh, we the mature adults. We got to go. And, you know, there's some coaches hurting in there. So I had a staff meeting this morning. I talked to them about it. I'm going to be very positive. Uh, I'm going to execute the 24-hour rule early myself. We're going to move forward. Uh, this is a very good Arkansas team in some aspects. Uh, this is going to be a very challenging road trip. Uh, but it was two years ago. We went up there and we played fine. And uh, plus, Kelly's family's from Arkansas, so we better win. <laughs> This, this is not a sarcastic question. I don't want you to take it that way. But did the analysts help? Uh, did, did, you, did you get some reports from them where you yes. saw stuff? Yeah. Sure, sure. Yes. Yes, I couldn't ask our analysts to be more better than they are. No question. You know, I don't know if um, they can sack to us, stop his long passes. I don't think they can do that. And, you know, and, and again, you know, that guy, you think about some of the plays that he made in that football game were phenomenal plays. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, give them some credit. They made plays, but we, we felt that, you know, most part we had the information that we, that we needed to have. Uh, things that were happening in the game, uh, information was given to us. So those guys, I wouldn't trade our analysts for anything. They're wonderful. Top right, Coach. Early in the season, Arkansas had some really tough losses. Uh, the record still isn't very good, but they look like they're playing better. How yeah. have you seen – I how much you've seen of them on film, they've progressed yeah. from week yeah. one to now? Yeah, I've watched their offense, and I didn't get a chance to watch their defense yet. Uh, last night I watched the uh, Alabama game. I believe I watched the Ole Miss game, and I watched another game. I don't forgot what it was. And we watched the cut-ups this morning, and their offense is becoming explosive. It's becoming Chad Morris's offense. He has a nice run bounce option. He has a nice uh, look over on the line of scrimmage. Uh, he has a difficult scheme, uh, just what I expect out of Chaz Morris. And uh, defensively, I know they have some good defensive linemen to get some sacks. I haven't looked at him on defense yet. Hey, Ed, down here. Um, at the beginning of the season, whenever you were uh, talking about the offense, you said all Steve did was set records when he was in the interim. At this point, where do you assess where this offense is? I think, hey, I think he's done an excellent job. Thank you. For us to beat Georgia about 20 points, I thought his eight game plan against Georgia was excellent. I thought the comeback victory against Auburn was excellent. I, I forgot how many points we put on Miami, at 33 points on Miami. I think he's done a tremendous job there. Uh, Steve's a Tiger, very pleased with his work. All right, guys, have a great day.